Okay guys, welcome back to Java Video Tutorials. This is lesson 11. It also happens to be our first lesson in object-oriented programming. And so from now uh, from now on, we're just going to be dealing with objects uh, most of the time. And that's really going to help us uh, write more complex programs. Uh, so everything we've done before now is uh, has just been the linear programming that was popular about 40 years ago. So let's go ahead and open up Dr. Java and um, object-oriented programming. It's cool stuff, and uh, even if you already know it, uh, I'm going to get real in-depth here, and you're going to learn a lot of intricacies about uh, object-oriented programming, especially with the Java language. So I'm putting this in your here window. There you go. So, uh, first thing we need is an example uh, or uh, some kind of application that we're going to create. And since I really suck at coming up with examples, I am going to code a shape object for you. But first, before we even start typing, I'm going to talk about what is an object and how do you create them, what is an object made of, and what can it do for us. So in uh, Java uh, and your other OOP languages, all objects are created from a class. And a class is basically a definition of uh, how an object should behave or act. And um, so an object in Java is basically, when you come down to it, you're creating your own data type. So you already know some of the Java data types. You have your integers and your doubles and your strings and your booleans, and they all represent data in a different kind of way. So if we can create our own data types, then really the sky is the limit uh, with our programming and um, we can do so much with it. So um, let's say I'm building an application and um, you know maybe I'm uh, building like a, a drawing application so like Microsoft Paint or something and so I'm going to create an object or a, a class called shape and I will be able to use this class to create many shape objects and every shape object will be able to relate to another shape object. So we start out a class uh, the same way you're used to. I'm just going to say uh, public class shape. Make sure you capitalize that S in shape. But here, instead of saying public static void main, you see we're not uh, we're not writing uh, the start the starting point of our program. We're supplementing our program by creating this data type. So we're not going to have a main method here. Uh, but instead, we need to create our class for shape. So usually, the first thing you'll see is your field variables or your instance variables, and um, Basically, these are the properties of your data type. So in our case, we're creating a shape data type. And if you think about it, uh, shapes can have a certain number of properties. So for instance, you can have the property, is it closed? So like a line would not be a closed shape, but on the other hand, a circle would be uh, an example of a closed shape. So uh, closed, yes or no, that's a Boolean type uh, or a boo Boolean variable. And you might have uh, some other kind of representation of size. Um, and maybe, let's say, it has a color. So if we're doing this, or we're like building a Microsoft Paint application or whatever, and we're going to create this shape data type, and it's going to have a color. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to give it a boolean closed and that's just going to be uh, like that. I'm not going to give it a value because different shapes I create are going to have different values of closed and I'm also going to give it a uh, int size 
and I'm going to give it an int red and a green and a blue. So these are basically just your RGB values for the color of my shape. So the shape that I'm creating, my special shape, has these five properties and it can't have any more or any less unless I define them right here. So the next part of our class is called the constructor. The constructor is basically a method that is going to allow you to use this class to create an object. So if I want to create a shape object, I'm going to call the shape constructor. The constructor is going to build this object for me. And uh, it's also pretty simple syntax here. I'm just going to say public because uh, you, want, uh, you want all classes to be able to create your shape. So I'm going to say public and then shape. Shape has to be the same name as the class here. So that's why I use shape. <clears throat> shape is also the name of the method. So it will look like this. That's the shape constructor. That's how it looks. You'll notice I don't have a return type here because when I create a shape object, I'm not really returning anything. I'm creating this object. So inside of shape, I need to give it, uh, I need to be able Okay, I think the audio just went out. Uh, I hope it wasn't out for too long. But when I'm creating a shape, I want to be able to uh, give it these five parameters. And I should be able to specify whatever I want for these five parameters. So when I create a shape, I'm going to pass in five variables. I'm going to pass in a Boolean, and I'm going to call it B. And then I'm going to pass in an int s, int r, int g, and int b. So usually when I create my constructors, I just I use the same data type of here is the field variables, and then I use the first uh, letter or the first couple of letters in the name of the variable. So I have my uh, braces, and then here I just need to set these field variables equal to whatever was passed into this shape constructor. So let's go ahead and say closed equals C and then S equals size, sorry, size equals S. That's a very important thing. You have to have the field variable first. You have to say size equals S and not S equals size. The reason for that is uh, this equal sign is not necessarily equals, it's better, uh, is assign the value of. So size, which is this variable, is assign the value of s, which is whatever was passed in to my constructor. If I set it the other way around, uh, size wouldn't get changed and we'd have an error. So I'm going to say um, uh, red equals r and green equals g and blue equals B. So now we have our constructor. That was fairly simple to do and we will be able to call this constructor and create our own shape object. So I'm going to stop right there and go ahead and uh, compile this shape and um, let me do right here and I'm going to overwrite shape since this is the second time I've done this lesson. And I have an error here. Uh, what did I do? Line 9, it says B is already defined. Oh, I have, should be Boolean C, not B. So let's go ahead and compile that again. And now it says compilation completed. Now since I don't have a main method, I can't run my program. But Dr. Java and its fancy interactions window has compiled uh, this <coughs> this class here. So I'll be able to use it in the interactions window. So let's create a new shape. Well, uh, remember I said we created our own data types. So if we wanted to uh, create a new integer, we'd say something like int x equals 
59 or something like that and that would be a legal statement <laughs> but if we want to create a new shape we're not using the int data type we're using shape so shape and we'll call it s equals and then here's um, a, a little bit different syntax we're going to use the keyword new and then we're going to say what kind of object we want so shape s equals new shape and this shape right here is actually the same as this constructor right here so it's going to take in these five parameters so let's go ahead and fill those in I'm going to say uh, true so it is closed and let's give it an arbitrary size of 35 and uh, pretend it's like uh, a red shape so it's going to have 255 0 and 0 so this is going to create our new shape object so if, um, what this does uh, this is kind of a tricky subject that we'll definitely get into more detail later but s is not assigned the value of this new shape object and this is one of the little nuances of Java can you hear me I don't know how long I cut out uh, if it was longer than necessary then uh, I guess I'll do this lesson again otherwise I'll just leave it I apologize for that I will start back to here though where I say shape s equals new shape so s is not actually assigned the value of this new shape object uh, and this is one of the nuances of Java that might be different from a, a different programming language languages but uh, what happens here is s gets assigned the memory location of this shape object and s is called a pointer or that memory location is called a pointer because this the actual shape object is existing somewhere uh, in the java heap space and we don't know exactly where that is but this pointer uh, uh, points to that memory location so shape s equals new shape really new shape is going out somewhere we don't really know or care and then s is going to be pointing to that location whereas if I just say int x equals 59 well uh, x is assigned the value of 59 and it goes right there and uh, it's not pointing to an alternate location so uh, we'll definitely get into more detail about pointers uh, later on but I just want to show you here I can uh, say system dot out dot print line s okay so what do you think is gonna happen I'm saying print line and s s is um, s is this shape object well we know how to print out integers and we know how to print out boolean values and we know how to print out strings but how do, how exactly are we going to print out this shape object I mean we haven't really told it what it looks like uh, as a text version so if I say this it's going to return this weird string shape at c two eight c b seven and this is some kind of weird memory location and this will never be useful to you in, um, in writing an actual program the reason this happens uh, we'll get into in another lesson or two um, but the point is you can't just print out an object but one thing I can do is I can say print out s dot closed and s dot closed is going to find the boolean variable closed in this shape object this dot here is called the dereference operator and what it does is it takes the pointer of s it goes and finds that memory location that uh, for the object that it's pointing to and it goes and uh, goes to that object and it takes the closed variable which is right here so if I print that out you'll see that it's true because when I created my shape object I gave it true so I can go ahead and uh, print out any of the variables like s.red 
255s dot blue zero. So you'll see that um, that's all great, and now I have my wonderful shape object. So uh, in fact, I think I'm going to leave it there for this lesson, and in the next lesson, I will uh, incorporate the. I'll add to this uh, class here, and I will also incorporate it into uh, a cl another class that actually has a main method. But for now, I think that was good, and my voice is getting kind of raspy now. So I think it's a good place to stop, and also we're not running too long. 15 minutes and 45 seconds sounds good to me. So uh, I'll see you guys later, and have a great day.